Hi everyone. We're going to look at another example of a Lagrange multipliers problem. So we want to find the maximum volume of a rectangular box that's inscribed inside this ellipsoid and its sides are going to be parallel to the coordinate planes. So let's get a feel for what this looks like. So here's our ellipsoid. What I'm interested in is sticking a box inside here. So let's just start with a vertex that's going to be right on the surface. Then from that vertex, let's say that's vertex x, y, z, where x, y, z are all positive, so we're out here in the first octant. Then once we have that, we would get the vertices for the other points by just, that would be negating the x value, so that would be negative x, y, z. And I'd get the one down here by negating the z value, so that would be x, y, negative z, and so on could get all of these different points and we would get our rectangular box. So it looks something like that. The main idea is that once we know one of the vertices by symmetry we get all of the other ones. So we're going to use that. So to compute the volume, we just recognize that it would have dimension of 2x in that direction, it would be 2z in this direction, and it would be a width of 2y. So our volume is going to be 2x times 2y times 2z, or in other words, 8xyz. What is our constraint? Well, our point x, y, z has to live on this ellipsoid. So our constraint is that x squared over 3 squared plus y squared over 4 squared plus z squared over 5 squared is equal to 1. So we can call this our g of x, y, z. So now we're all set up to use Lagrange multipliers. We need to work out the x partial of v and that's got to equal to lambda g sub x v sub y is equal to lambda g sub y v sub z is equal to lambda g sub z and then we've got our constraint equation, our ellipsoid okay so let's work out these things what is v sub x? v sub x would be 8yz, that's got to equal lambda g sub x, so that's got to be 2 lambda x over 3 squared, or 9. This would be 8xz is equal to 2 lambda y over 4 squared, which is 16. And this one is 8xy is equal to 2 lambda z over 25. So there's our three equations. We've got our three unknowns. Now we need to figure out how to solve them. Uh, one thing to observe is that we can divide through by 2. So this would be a 4. And because I'm missing, so I look at this, this first equation, I got a y z on the left hand side, the next equation has an x z, the next equation has an x y. I'm missing a third variable, so maybe just to make things all nice and symmetric and exploit, exploit some patterns here, we can divide by 2 and multiply by x. So I get a 4xyz is equal to lambda x squared over 9. I get an 8xyz, so I'm multiplying this one through by y, oh, and I'm going to divide by 2 as well. So I get a 4xyz is equal to lambda y squared over 16 and the last one I'll multiply through by z, and so I get a 4xyz is equal to lambda z squared over 25. Well, what's nice about this is I see that x squared over 9, y squared over 16, and z squared over 25, by the constraint, those add up to 1. So if I call this equation 1, this equation 2, and this equation 3, 
then I will sum 1 plus 2 plus 3. And what happens when I sum them all up? I get the left-hand sides all sum up to 12xyz, and the right-hand is lambda times x squared over 9 plus y squared over 16 plus z squared over 25, but the constraint tells me that adds up to 1, so this just sums up to lambda. And even more than that, I can divide through by 3, and I get 4xyz is equal to lambda over 3. That's pretty handy, because I have a 4xyz in all of these things, and now that tells me I can just replace those with lambda over 3s. So what I get is that my new equation 1 can become lambda over 3 is equal to lambda x squared over 9. And so now we just observe that lambda can't be 0, because if lambda was 0, then this equation 4xy, so this equation here, 4xyz equal to lambda over 3. If lambda was 0, that would mean xyz is equal to 0. But then I look, scroll up, and I would have my volume, which is 8 times xyz, volume would be 0. And I'm trying to find the maximum volume of a box. So lambda equals 0 wouldn't give me the maximum volume. So it would give me the minimum volume. So that it certainly is a solution. It's not going to give me the maximum volume, and that's what I'm interested in. So what I'll say here is that lambda is not 0, because otherwise I wouldn't get the maximum volume. And so that means that I get 9 over 3. And I'm going to keep it as 9 over 3. I know I could reduce that to, to 3. But that's equal to x squared. So in other words, x is equal to 3 over root 3. And this was because, since x has to be bigger than 0. Why does x have to be bigger than 0? Well, I'm taking x, y, z to be that vertex of the box in octant 1. And so its x, y, and z values are all positive. Okay, so we've got our x value. Now, similarly, I could take that equation, this one here, 4xyz equals lambda over 3, and I can plug it into equation 2, and then plug it into equation 3. So what I would get is lambda over 3 is equal to lambda y squared over 16, and then also plugging into equation 3 gives me lambda over 3 is equal to lambda z squared over 25. And again, lambda is not equal 0, so this becomes 16 over 3 is equal to y squared, or y is equal to 4 over root 3, and this is 25 over 3 is equal to z squared, or z is equal to 5 over root 3. So I left that first one with the, without cancelling the 3 from the 9 over 3, or the 3 in the top with the 3 in the bottom, because now I get this nice pattern happening that the x-coordinate is 3 over root 3, the y-coordinate is 4 over root 3, the z-coordinate is 5 over root 3. And so what we have is that, therefore, x, y, z is equal to 3 over root 3, 4 over root 3, and 5 over root 3. And the volume, so these are the dimensions of the box, and the volume is given by 8 times the product, 3 over root 3 times 4 over root 3 and 5 over root 3. And so that becomes 160 over root 3. So there we found the box that has maximum volume and the corresponding volume is 160 over root 3. I'll kind of clean up that 3 in the bottom because it didn't look like one. So I may ask, well, how did we know it was a maximum? I didn't say anywhere along the line it was a maximum. Well, the idea is, when I think about the problem, I'm trying to find a box that sits inside this ellipsoid. I can certainly find minimum value boxes by just making them as thin as possible, basically, 
<laughs> zero volume, so I can find a zero volume box, that would be the smallest possible. So when I'm looking for the maximum volume box, we said that x, y, and z all have to be strictly bigger than zero. And that gave us only one possible candidate. And therefore that candidate has to give us the maximum volume. Alright, so that's it for this example. Thanks for watching.